Hello, I'm Miriam Arnold, and today I will be joined by my two colleagues, Rajat Martin and Rajorshi Bhattacharya, as we explore the concept of a level five leader and how these leaders create extraordinary results for companies. So can a good company become a great company? That's the question that Jim Collins, a management expert, wanted to an answer. He took a research team over a period of five years to look at this question. They took Fortune 500 companies, there were 1,400 of them that they examined, and then started looking at a lot of qualitative and a lot of quantitative data for these 1,400 companies. In total, they looked at over 6,000 reports and articles, uh, 87 interviews, strategies, compensations and turnovers for these companies. What they found through all of that research was that there were exactly 11 companies that stood among the rest. Over a period of 30 years that they looked at data for, they found that these 11 companies were doing well, they were doing okay, and then all of a sudden they had this sudden shift in their returns. And they were able to then sustain that shift for many years. On average, those 11 companies boasted returns that were seven times that of the general stock market. Those are remarkable and extremely rare returns. In essence, every shareholder for these 11 companies on average was making $7 to every dollar that somebody not investing in these companies was averaging. When they compared these results to other companies, companies that were also doing well and should have been doing fantastic, but were not, what they found that stood out among everything else was one factor, and that's what they called level five leadership. During the course of our presentation, we're gonna delve into what a level five leader is, provide examples from Jim Collins' article, and then apply it to modern leadership concepts that we've looked at, the, looked at throughout the course, um, which will explain how a leader is then able to create an environment that drives these types of remarkable results that those 11 companies saw. Rajorshi, please take it away. The first example of a level five leader in this article is that of Darwin E. Smith, chief executive of Kimberly Clark a paper company whose stock had fallen 36% behind the general market during the previous 20 years. Even though he was told by a director that he was unqualified for this position and was battling cancer, Smith remained CEO for 20 years, during which he turned it into the leading consumer paper products company in the world, beating its rivals Scott Paper and Procter & Gamble. And in doing so, Kimberly Clark generated cumulative stock returns that were four times greater than that of the general market completely outperforming venerable companies such as Hewlett Packard, 3M, Coca-Cola, and General Electric. Shortly after he took over, Smith and his team took a gamble by thrusting the company into the fire of consumer paper products business, where better economics and world-class competition like Procter & Gamble would force it to achieve greatness or perish. They abandoned their core business of coated paper by selling all their mills and putting the proceeds into the consumer business with investments in brands like Huggies Diapers and Kleenex Tissues. The business media called the move stupid and Wall Street analysts downgraded the stock. But 25 years later, Kimberly Clark owned Scott Paper and beat Procter & Gamble in six of eight product categories. Coleman and Mockler, CEO of Gillette from 1975 to 1991, faced down three takeover attempts. In one proxy battle, Mockler and other senior executives called thousands of investors one by one in order to win their votes. He chose to fight for the future greatness of Gillette, even though he could have easily pocketed millions by flipping his stock. If he had given in and a share flipper had accepted the full 44% price premium which was being offered by Perelman and then invested those shares in the general market for 10 years, he still would have come out 64% behind a shareholder who chose to stay behind with Mockler and Gillette. If Mockler had given up the fight, it's likely that none of us would be shaving with Gillette's revolutionary products. George Kane took over as CEO of Abbott Labs 
an erstwhile family control business sitting at the bottom quartile of the pharmaceutical industry and living off his cash cow, Erythromycin. He systematically rebuilt both the board and the executive team with the best people he could find and completely abolished nepotism within the company. And by doing so, he set in motion a profitable growth machine which beat the market by 4.5 times, outperforming giants like Merck and Pfizer by a factor of two. Charles R. Cork, Walgreen III, as CEO, transformed Walgreens into a company that outperformed the stock market by 16 times from its transition from 75 to 2000 after realizing that the company's brightest future lay ahead in convenient drugstores and not in food service. The research team interviewed Alan L. Wurzel, the level 5 leader who was responsible for turning Circuit City from a ramshackle company on the edge of bankruptcy into one of America's most successful electronics retailers. In the 15 years after its transition date in 82, Circuit City outperformed the market by 18.5 times. So far, we have seen examples of level 5 leaders and how they proved their worth with their extraordinary contributions to their companies. I shall talk about the characteristics that these individuals display and whether those characteristics can be replicated. One of the concepts that the author discusses is the window and mirror effect. When level five leaders successfully outperform the rest of the industry, they look out the window to give credit, attributing the success to factors outside themselves. And when credit cannot go to a specific person, they just attribute the success to luck. Yes, luck. On the other hand, they look in the mirror to assign responsibility, never blaming adverse situations on bad luck. These attitudes not only display a great work ethic, but also serve as inspirational actions to other employees. The theory of level five leadership is relatively counterintuitive, but draw some parallels with other modern day leadership theories. The most evident probably being authentic leadership. Level five leaders distinctively embraced their inner humility, even at a time when CEOs were popularly expected to be charismatic and larger than life individuals. In a way, this proves Jim Collins hypothesis that not everyone has the level five seed within them. The values and beliefs necessary may lie nascent and it usually takes a profound experience or positive external influence to see that touching the lives of people who work with them and the success of the company is more significant than their own personal needs of fame, fortune and Power. The search for level five leaders in the present day pointed to Warren Buffett as a great example. His management of Berkshire Hathaway is textbook level five. He never shies away from praising those around him. In 2008, although Berkshire lost 32% of its own value, it still beat the S&P 500. Despite this, Buffett shouldered responsibility and examined his own errors that reduced profits. Warren Buffett, who is now 86 and still the CEO, st has started the structure of his succession plan about six years ago. So to summarize, level five leaders are humble and display strong professional will. They are motivated to build greatness and plan for their succession. They look in the mirror to take responsibility and out the window to credit others. In conclusion, it's a good idea to take inspiration from these few superbly successful individuals and whether we manage to reach level five or not, it is definitely worth the effort to try. 
As the concepts of level 5 leadership become increasingly popular, especially in conjunction with other modern day leadership values, it might prove helpful to self-reflect and look for opportunities to rise to the unconventional definition of greatness. Thank you.